hey, I struggled, you're probably struggling. Dude, let's not struggle anymore, okay? I'm gonna share some specific stories, facts, tips, strategies of when I struggled, why I struggle with my presentation as a new insurance agent. I'm gonna tell you a couple quick stories most people don't know, you've never heard before, okay? And you're gonna hear them now, okay? The first one is, I went up to a um, couple hours from here, northern Missouri, and I showed up to a lead for someone who was interested in life insurance. Okay, this was, this was within my first six months in the business. I'm 20 years old, I'm a brand new agent, I'm going up, and based on the conversation, I did a little preparing and I thought, wow, this has the opportunity to be a really big sell. So I go up, I sit down, and we end up finding out that he already has a term policy with our company that had turned into an annual renewable term to where the term was actually, the price was going up every single year. And it was pretty getting pretty expensive. And he was looking, this was a home office lead, he was looking to convert that or to do something different because he wasn't gonna keep paying the amount of money he was paying now. So I'm thinking, my eyes get big, I'm like, dang, this is a good opportunity, right? So I do what I always do. I go through my sales process, my presentation, I slow down, I did good on that, I slowed down. Got to the end, I presented like three options, like I always do, right? I always talk about, hey, one, two, three, right? Well, the, bi the, the, the biggest one was $1,200 per month. Cha-ching, right? And I present 1200 bucks a month. He looks at me, <laughs> you can tell I was new. He looks at me and says, well, what do you recommend? I'm like, I said, dude, I'd do the big one. And I'm like, now I'm thinking, I, like there could have been a better way to approach this. There could have been a better way to say this. So guess what? I'm new. I present 1200 bucks a month. This was a decade ago. I'm telling him to do that one. He's like, you know, okay, maybe, you know. And so I convinced him to at least do the app because I drove two and a half hours. So I do the app. I leave, I'm supposed to call him in a couple days when he talks to his CPA or CFO or something. I don't know, he made up some story. And he didn't move forward. And that killed me, right? Well, where did I struggle? Number one, I saw dollar signs and I just tried to grab the most amount of money that I could possibly get right now. That's a, that's a problem, okay? Because at the end of the day, what, what are we put there to do to help them the best way we can? I saw dollar signs as a new agent, and in that moment I struggled. When in reality, I should have slowed down. I should have said, well, you know, all three of these are gonna solve your problem. Which one makes the most sense to you, right? I should have put it back on him. I should ask a question. I should have like slowed down and maneuvered. I should have, right? I shouldn't have just, I think he could tell. It was like, I was like, dude, give me your wallet, man. You know what I mean? I got excited, right? And we all get excited and we struggle and we, and we, and, and we make mistakes. That was one for me, okay? Here's a second one. Okay, here's the second one. I went down, the, 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 I'm just gonna use my one, two, three for actual stories now. The second one was I went down to Arkansas for a warm market appointment, semi-warm market. This was after my first year, the very beginning of my second year, by the way. So you think about it, I'd already made 117 grand my first year. I thought I was this hot shot. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm selling everybody I talk to and what most people don't know is I made 117 grand in eight months and then I took four months off to focus on school and basketball. I think I may have did a little bit of stuff part-time, but it pretty much was like, dude, I just made, I just hit my goal, so I'm gonna just take the rest of the year off, right? Wish I wouldn't have now, whatever, okay? I go back in January to run my first appointment after not running appointments very much for four months. Heh. <laughs> Just like you gotta shoot hoops, just like you gotta shoot the basketball every day or you get rusty. You don't run appointments every day, you're gonna get rusty, okay? At least for four months. So I show up, I run this appointment, I just present options in front of them. I'm there like 20 minutes, right? I'm like, oh, this will be easy, I got this. I show options and they don't come in. For whatever reason, I don't remember all the specifics, I drive home an hour back to Springfield, Missouri and I'm thinking, what the freak is wrong with me? I used to make every freaking shot I took. And now I can't sell somebody that's known me since I was a kid. 
what is going on, right? I was struggling hard in that moment. That hour drive, I thought about so much stuff and I thought, dude, there was a few reasons why, I gave you some of the reasons why I struggled in this example. I'm gonna give you a few reasons why I struggled in this example, okay? And it ties into number three. It ties into number three. I got rusty, right? You don't, you don't flex the muscle, dude, it's going away. Okay, it's going away. I got rusty. I didn't even focus on, on building rapport. And I rushed the whole thing. The three R's. <laughs> didn't mean to do that, but that's how it turned out. Rusty, didn't build rapport, and I tried to rush it. And I just gave them quotes and hoped they did it. Right? That's a problem. What, 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 what's the learning lesson in this? That you've got to be consistent or you're going to fall apart also You've got to run your presentation the same way every time, no matter whether you think it's going to be an easy game or not, right? They always say that there's a lot of teams out there, and I used to do it too, where you'd play to your competition, where you'd beat a team that you weren't supposed to beat. In the next game, you play a team that's like 1-13, and, 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 and you literally you either lose or barely win. Why? Because you played down to your competition. Right? I got rusty and I thought, you know what? I can walk in and sell them whatever I want. Wrong. Wrong. Because I tried to rush it. I hadn't been, I hadn't been putting up shots. Right? And I didn't focus on building rapport. Anytime I struggled in my presentation, it came down to one single thing. Personally for me, this may not be for true for you, but when I had, a, when I had presentation issues, it came down to one thing for me. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? For me, if I struggled, I had not built rapport. If I struggled and I walked away without a deal, guess what? I struggled at building rapport. They didn't trust me. They didn't feel like there was common ground, right? There was, no, there was no relationship there yet. That's what a lot of people miss. There's got to be a relationship for them to give you money. There's got to be common ground for them to give you money. You've gotta, there's got to be some trust there for them to want to give you money every month for the rest of your life. The rest of their life at least, right? So anytime I struggled in the presentation, it always came back down to this for me rapport and I could tell story after story after story after story of how I struggled in the presentation because of this right here okay every single time right I remember selling a selling a policy on the north side of Springfield that I rushed and sold because it was a chaotic house and environment and there was a lot of stuff going on I, you know that, that I'll explain in another video and I literally leave grab the policy and leave, but he doesn't stay my client. Why? There was no relationship. Why would they stay with you later? Right? For example, I had this happen to where I had a client a couple hours east of here because I sold them. I built a relationship. I sent them newsletters every single month when the next person came along to help them with their Medicare. This was years ago. And they were able to save them seven, eight, 10, 12, $15 a month, they did not care. They didn't move. And they called me and said, hey, sounds like somebody can beat what you have for the exact same product, but we're not going to switch. Why? Because we have a great relationship with you. We like you. We trust you. We know you have our best interest at heart. We know you care. And you communicate with us every single month. Right? This isn't like, you know, you know what they call people that, that don't care about their clients, that don't build a relationship, that don't build rapport? They call them, my dad calls them, a policy peddler. Right? I don't know if I'm spelling that right, but whatever. A policy peddler. I started out my career as a policy peddler, and then I quickly learned that I was, my gift was this. I have a way for whatever reason, when I'm in a sell situation, I always, and it's not, it's not like fake, I always end up complimenting the prospect numerous times. 
And it's not fake. I'm not lying. I mean what I'm saying. It's a habit now. I don't even notice I'm doing it. I'll get off the call and they'll be like, man, dude, they, they probably loved you. I'm like, why? They're like, because, dude, you, you talked about them the whole time. You complimented the heck out of them. You built rapport and you showed how much you cared about them. I'm like, I, I, I didn't even, like, it's human nature, right? When you do this enough, you will get phenomenal and you'll start to struggle less. Hey, if you love this, you'll love how to do a presentation for insurance agents. There's a couple pieces of this video that I've never talked about before. It's right here. Click on it. You'll love it. Hey, almost every insurance agent I know struggles with objections, specifically what to do and how to improve your closing ability. So I'm going to talk through several different things. Okay, I always talk about 